Right, thanks. Um, yes, I'll do my best to shorten it, but uh, I can't make any promises. Just shut me down when I need to stop. So I'm Brian with a Y from South Africa. I'm a senior technologist in the ACE lab. That's the Advanced Computer Engineering Lab. Um, if anyone wants to just let me know with a sh the raise hand or a comment in the chat, who here has not heard of the CHPC? If one person says they haven't heard of us, I'll explain who we are. Okay, cool. Oh, okay, right, I'll let you know. And um, I'm assuming everyone has heard of South Africa. So uh, besides Peter, is there anyone here from Africa in the chat? Okay, no problem. So this is South Africa. We are on the south of Africa. It's the most descriptive country name in the world. And Cape Town is a town in the Cape. And that's where the Center for High Performance Computing is based, the CHPC. Uh, it's more like a city now, but if we called ourselves Cape City, we'd probably be populated by superheroes. And actually, we are. I shouldn't, I shouldn't deny the fact that Peter is a superhero. Um, this is me at the CHPC. And just a bit of disclaimer here. The reason I'm not sharing a video is in South Africa, we've been locked down for almost 60 days. I have three kids, very young, two dogs, a bedroom that is also an office and a way to the, the garden. I haven't been to the barber in a while, and I've been honoring fat in the curves. So I'm not very presentable at the moment. Uh, Peter mentioned this briefly about HPC system engineers. Typically, and in the first talk we had on Monday, a lot of the focus was on HPC users being the big elephant in the room. So I thought I would just mention that sysadmins, oh, Peter's hand is up. So I don't know if I must pause for that now or wait. So okay. it was an accident. Okay. Your superhero rights have been revoked. Um, so yeah, we, we, we also believe that uh, sysadmins have uh, some rights and sysadmins are what make our systems fly. So that's why we have Cape City. And for that reason, I think they also need to be part of the conversation. Center of High Performance Computing is our national supercomputing facility in South Africa. It's a one petaflop system. We recently fell out of the top 500, but as far as I know, we are still the largest HPC system in Africa. And we do this, the traditional stuff that most national supercomputing facilities do for the research institutes and academic institutions. But we also partner with our Southern African community. Those are all the countries on the green side here. And we're also part of the SKA, the Square Kilometer Array. So we service those partner countries as well, namely the Western African country of Ghana and East Africa, Kenya. Otherwise, most of the, SKA, the rest of the SKA countries are part of the Southern African community. And we must not leave out that little dot there being the tropical island Mauritius. So we do the traditional activities that we focus on for developing an HPC workforce. Um, the first being research support, where we try to facilitate advancements in research and optimizations for the researchers using our system. We also run two annual uh, schools, a summer school and a winter school. The summer school is very similar to a software carpentry type workshop. It's an introduction to scientific computing tools uh, for HPC, Python, Linux, that sort of stuff. But the winter school focuses more, would be almost a natural progression from the summer school. If we were able to present a certification for, for people that attended and completed the summer school, they would then be certified to attend the winter school. That's our ambition. So at the winter school, we focus on parallel programming and effective cluster, cluster usage. And in parallel to the winter school, we also run our annual student cluster competition. The first round begins during the winter school. The focus there is to perform outreach for undergraduate students in the hopes that we can steer them towards a career in HPC. But we also like to compete internationally. And um, yeah, we have a, a pretty good record competing internationally. We tend to win the SCC competition. And speaking of winning, I have to just slot that in there that South Africa are the Rugby World Cup champions. But I need to give a shout out. We do have representatives from the other top three countries in the Southern Hemisphere on our speaking panel. So welcome to New Zealand and Australia. Good effort, not good enough. Um, then I run the HPC Ecosystems Project. That's part of the ACE Lab initiatives. We take decommissioned top tier supercomputing systems 
from leading facilities around the world. And we repurpose them into mid-tier systems and we deploy them in South African institutions as well as partner countries in the Southern African region and the SKA. And that's where I'd like to fly the flag for the system engineers. We are developing a, an African workforce for HPC system administrators. So some of the challenges and the lessons we've learned through those activities. With the winter school specifically, like I mentioned, we have some expectations from the attendees. We'd like them to have some basic programming background, some HPC experience. They should at least know how to spell HPC and they should have used a Linux system. But what we expect from the participants and what they expect from us is quite significantly uh, misaligned. Typically the participants arrive, some have maybe some Ubuntu graphical user interface experience, but they've never used the shell. Some have not done any basic programming and will expect us to give them basic introduction to HPC. So whereas the trainers are expecting some core competencies so that we can focus on the parallel programming aspect, the time is lost in the first couple of days as we try to evaluate what the class actually can do and what we expect them to do. And we have to adjust our content on the fly. That's quite frustrating because it, it makes it very difficult for us to raise the bar in terms of our optimizing our academic activity on the cluster. So it's, you'll understand teaching OpenMP or MPI concepts to people that have never programmed, much less have never SSH onto an HPC system. It's an impossible task. So where an HPC certification would help, if we could specify a specific requirement that they have to have X or Y certificate before they can actually attend, that would help us to filter out what we find as a, a, a massive confounding factor for us actually making a meaningful contribution at our winter schools. Likewise, my experience with the ecosystems project, typically if a system is available for free, sadly, someone will want to take it, even if they may not be ready or able to use it. So this zero cost blurs the, 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 the rationality. And instead of people accepting they need to take time to prepare for the system, uh, they, they want to grab it. So our most recent system at the moment is tax stampede system and that's being rolled out, but we have a, a, a regular pipeline. So it's not like there won't be new equipment in the future, but people want to grab it because they think they won't get another chance. And this is typically a, a side effect of leadership, not understanding what an HPC resource is, and they want to just get what they can when it's available. Um, so when we are assigned a system administrator from the site, sometimes those uh, administrators have no experience whatsoever in Linux. They have never heard of an HPC, and they may not even be traditional system administrators. With respect to one of my colleagues, he's a geologist. He was assigned the HPC system, and he's doing a great job of catching up, learning what he needs to, but his system's been idle for more than a year as he still learns how to install Linux and actually use a command line. Um, again, it would be great if we had a certification, perhaps one that we could even issue to management that just says introduction to HPC concepts so they can actually understand what systems they're applying for. Um, we still have people that require that, that obtain our HPC systems and they try to install Windows or they try to install VMware, um, which is obviously not what we want to do with our systems. Uh, as far as the student cluster competition goes, historically in South Africa, there's a, 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 a diverse background, uh, historically disadvantaged institutes versus the more affluent institutes. So when we have our intense one week training uh, at the student cluster competition, we, we start at the introduction to Linux. We go all the way through the concepts of HPC. Then we send the students home to prepare for the final round in South Africa where they build their systems and they actually run some benchmarks. But some universities don't have expertise back home to teach them. So those ones are left behind and they t traditionally will suffer at the final competition round before we select the team to participate in Germany. And it would be great if we were able to have a certification to allow that, to ensure that all the participants acquire the certification before they even attend the winter school. That way we could focus our one week intense training on hands-on practical experience with an HPC system. They will have learned all the Linux that they need beforehand and they'll come with a much more level playing field because during the practicals at the winter school, uh, we'll find the, the historically disadvantaged institutes are still learning to actually use the Linux command line while the more uh, equipped universities are already uh, running the benchmarks. So just in summary, 
some of the, the main reasons we would like to see an HPC certification. Like I've mentioned, it allows the winter school to focus on the important skills that we want to teach to the attendees and uh, not focus on trying to catch them up to uh, you know, a, living, a level playing field at the beginning of the, the school. The student class competition, if we were able to have a certification to ensure that the participants were ready for the winter school, it would reduce the workload for the advanced computer engineering lab. There's only a few of us, and we could actually expand the competition and the outreach because we could run a lot of these things behind the scenes and focus on the, the core aspects of the competition during the one-week intensive training. Likewise, with my ecosystems project, with a certification, we can filter out the sites that are not ready yet to receive equipment. And then when they do finally receive equipment, they'll be able to get to the science rather than spend up to a year trying to figure out how to use a Linux command line. So what we would like as the Center for High Performance Computing, when we're doing training, we'd like to know our audience. If they came with certifications that we could recognize and understand what those certifications uh, attest to, we'd know what we're building from. We would know what, what uh, the audience will be like, and then we can also work towards a particular goal. Uh, it's great to have the option of providing a certificate that's recognized at the end of a winter school, because then they know that they're building their CV as well. Uh, oh, uh, during the COVID-19 crisis at the moment, we're actually moving all of our material online. And one of the natural challenges with online training is the high dropout rate. So having a recognized certificate would also be an incentive for people to stay in the program. Um, yes, so CHPC does have a dream along what they would like for certifications. Uh, but I have to add the caveat that this is my dream on behalf of the CHPC. We'd like to see sample certifications along the lines of an introduction to HPC, which would be a very high level understanding of an HPC. Uh, that would be very useful for, like I said, the student class competition participants that have never heard of an HPC, don't know how to spell HPC. But then also for my project, the ecosystems project, having the decision makers that are signing up an institution to receive equipment, knowing that they actually understand what they're asking for, not just taking something that is free, but something that they know is useful to them. And they can also allocate the right resources to making sure the system will be used. Likewise, a system admin certification, perhaps as high level as just overview of software stack, perhaps more granular, like an HPC system administration and open HPC. Um, the, the rest of there, I, I assume most of you can read. So the slides will be available. We don't have to talk over that. I know I've gone over my time. Um, for those that would like to keep in contact, due to popular demand, I've made my business card available for you to print, cut out, paste wherever you need to paste it in your home, your bathroom, wherever. And I look forward to hearing from people. I'm really excited about what the, the forum is trying to do. And I, I hope that we get something tangible soon. Thank you very much. That was great. Thanks, Brian. Is there any question, comment, command, uh, thoughts that you want, anyone want to add to this wonderful spot? Presentation. Yeah, the ego again, wonderful. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, look, the problems you have identified are ones that we all, of course, uh, grapple with. And um, one of the things that I, I know, if I may uh, recommend, is that engagement with universities because uh, say unlike physics, so physics is taught at high school, physics is taught in first year, second year, third year, university. It's scaffolded up and there is a you know, fairly well-defined universal agreement as to what you teach when. That's not the case with HPC. And it mustn't be just one of these things out of the blue. Here it comes, uh, now it's HPC. Um, what really needs to happen is for universities to recognize the importance of computing, uh, including uh, HPC uh, for you know, most sciences, uh, any quantitative endeavors, health, uh, anywhere, so that they build in fundamental computing courses into their standard courses, so that by the time they arrive at HPC, they have basic uh, competencies 
So in our case, I insist that I'm, you know, I'm the one who is responsible for uh, the physics program at Curtin, and I insist that all physics students take Unix and C, object-oriented program design, data structures and algorithms in their first year. These are computing units. And then we build on top of that with a, a numerical methods and all sorts of things. So by the time they come to that fourth year, when there is that unit, we know where everyone has come from. And otherwise, inefficient. And then, of course, we want to take them to the highest level of GPU programming, MPI, OpenMP. And so we only can do that because we know the background of our students. And I think that's the major change because when I go to around Australia and I look, you know, I've been asked to comment on the physics courses within Australia, uh, you know, people find it difficult to create a course that will have the right amount of computing uh, in it. And, uh, but that's something that uh, higher ups in the administration need to realize that the world is changing in that regard and that computing skills are absolutely necessary and that has to be dealt with uh, sooner rather than later. Right, and um, we, we, we recognize that, uh, totally agree with what you're saying. Uh, one of our initiatives at the Ecosystems Project is to actually train the trainers because at the universities in South Africa, traditionally they don't have the resources available to even teach these sort of concepts. Um, so our priority from a South African perspective is to get the systems to the universities and provide a resource that the students can then practice on. But a big hurdle is that there's a tremendous disparity across the uh, academic community at these universities. They've never had the background themselves. So right now we're focusing on uh, equipping the universities so that they can then develop these curricula. And we're actually in consultation with a lot of them around the curricula. Um, Peter van Houston, that spoke a bit earlier, he's actually one of the universities that's uh, involved with HPC and we've given them some equipment, but I'm not sure if that's being used to train his students so much as conduct research. But yes, definitely we we recognize, uh, well, Peter's got some stuff he can say. <laughs> 